Welcome back everybody to the quantum optics lectures. Today we want to discuss the dynamical solutions and the steady state solutions of the optical block equations that we derived in the last class and really see how the atom is responding to our coherent drive of the light field driving our atom but in addition having damping in the system how is this going to be different from the coherent evolution that we calculated in the Schrödinger picture. Okay let's get started. So here I've just plotted the solutions of the um, optical block equations for you for an initial state where my atom initially was in totally in the ground state so row 1 1 at time 0 was 1 and row 2 2 at time 0 was 0 and then we turn on the light field and we're looking how the population changes in the excited state so we're looking at row 2 2 and I'm plotting this now for two different kind of ratios of Rabi frequency to damping so here's a situation where Rabi frequency is slightly larger, three times larger than the damping. Here's a situation where the Rabi frequency equals the damping in the system. And you can see already several interesting things uh, happening here. So uh, for short times, in the first case, we see a few Rabi oscillations and then the system settles in into kind of a steady state value. And if you plot this, regardless of what value you choose of omega zero, this steady state value will always be below 0.5. And we'll come to that in a second. If the system is more highly damped, in this case where the Rabi coupling equals the damping in the system, so the coherent drive from our light field, the strength of the coherent drive of our light field, which is given by the Rabi frequency, equals the damping, the decay rate of our atom in the system, then we see that the system barely, you can barely see a Rabi oscillations here, and it kind of immediately settles in into this steady state value. So we can actually distinguish two time regimes where t is much smaller than 1 over gamma and there's the regime where we actually can see a few Rabi oscillations but these typically are damped and then for longer time evolutions t much larger than 1 over gamma kind of these Rabi oscillations will be highly damped and we're just going to approach a steady state value of our two level atom. And you can in general think of this kind of Rabi oscillations as being overlaid with kind of an exponential decay here given by the damping in the system. So this corresponds to the damped kind of oscillations that we have in the system that then lead to the steady state value, for example, for the population in the system. So let's calculate this steady state values a little bit better. And what defines the steady state, of course, in our rate equations, in our differential equations, is of course the condition that they don't change anymore. There's no change in the coherences and no change in the inversion anymore. That's the condition for kind of steady state, for reaching the steady state. And now we can just then set this to zero here in our optical block equations. And now this allows me to directly solve for the steady state coherence row 2 1 tilde or row 1 2 tilde and the steady state inversion of my system. So when these are zero I just solve this kind of two equations and solve for the inversion and the steady state coherence. And this is what I've done here. I've written the solutions down here and you see that the inversion is given by minus 1 divided by 1 plus s where s is the so-called saturation parameter of the system. And you see this S, that's just S0, and S0 again, that's the so-called resonant saturation parameter. Because S turns into S0 for the detuning going to zero. So you see here the saturation parameter, when the detuning goes to zero, this just equals S0 and S0 that's just the ratio actually of coherent drive in the system the Rabi frequency squared divided by gamma squared the damping we have in the system. So S0 is really actually a quantitative measure that tells us how damped is the system how strong is the coherent drive relative to the damping in the system. Now remember that omega 0 the Rabi frequency that was proportional to the electric field amplitude. So omega 0 squared will be proportional to E0 squared, the field amplitude squared, 
and the field amplitude squared, that's going to be proportional to the intensity of the light field that we're applying. So this really is just nothing than the intensity of the light field divided by some characteristic intensity of our atomic system that kind of we can calculate if you tell me your atom, the transition you're using, I could come up with this characteristic intensity given by my atomic physics parameters of my atom. So it's a ratio of the intensity here divided by this characteristic saturation intensity. And again, remember it's the ratio of coherent drive, Rabi frequency divided by damping. All right, let's look at a few solutions that we can get now. So I've written here again these steady state solutions, uh, the saturation parameter, the resonance saturation parameter, and now let's look at a few limiting cases that can occur in the system. So first of all, let's consider, let's just write this again as intensity divided by some saturation intensity. Now let's consider the case where the uh, saturation, intense, saturation parameter is much smaller compared to 1. So this would correspond to very weak intensities or a highly damped system. So this ratio of Rabi frequency to gamma to damping is very small. So we have a highly damped system. And in this case, when we're driving the system very weakly, when we're having only a very weak light field on the atom, you see then we can basically neglect this S, S goes to zero, and W approaches the inversion, inversion approaches minus one. Minus one, remember the inversion that was just row two, two, minus row one, one. And inversion approaching minus one means the atom is in the ground state. Atom is mainly in ground state. And this makes totally sense because, you know, if you start with the atom in the ground state and you just turn on a very, very weak light pulse, or a very far detuned light field where the detuning is really large, there's not really much going to happen to the atom. So it's basically going to stick in its state where it initially was in the ground state. Now the other case when the intensity goes to infinity, when basically I becomes very, very large and uh, the saturation parameter goes to infinity. So let's go S goes to infinity. So in this case, you see now the inversion, the steady state inversion actually goes to zero. And that means we have an equal population between the excited state and the ground state, but the inversion always comes from below zero, right? So you see when S goes to infinity, the inversion always stays kind of below zero uh, as S state finite, stays finite, but, but very large in the system. So we see that the system kind of always tends to have a little bit more population in the ground state compared to the excited state in this two-level atom. Even when we drive it extremely hard, the steady state solution can only approach the 50-50 occupation limit of those two, two levels that we have in our system.